Hi, and welcome to the American Liver Foundation webinar video series. I am Julianne Swan, Executive Director of the Rocky Mountain Division. Thank you for joining us today for this program. Did you know that non-alcoholic stevia hepatitis, or NASH, is a type of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? If you have NASH, you have inflammation, excess fat, and liver cell damage in your liver. Usually, NASH will cause few or no symptoms. Certain health conditions, including obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes, increase your chances of developing NASH. You may be able to prevent NASH by eating a healthy diet and maintaining a healthy weight. Today, we have with us Dr. John Goff from the Rocky Mountain Gastroenterology Centers in Denver, Colorado. He will be discussing the scope of the problem, the effects on the liver, who is at most risk, and additional injuries that can be caused, and what you can do to be healthier. If you have any questions, you can email Rocky Mountain at liverfoundation.org. That is Rocky, R-O-C-K-Y, Mountain, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N, at liverfoundation.org. Or leave a comment below and we will get back to you promptly. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. John Goff. This is uh, Dr. John Goff. I'm a gastroenterologist uh, working for Rocky Mountain Gastroenterology in Denver, Colorado. I am here today to talk to you about fatty liver disease, which is known as NASH or NAFLD. We are going to talk about what it is, why it is important to know about it, and how to treat it. The definitions that are important to understand for this talk are alcoholic liver disease, which uh, is fat and inflammation in the liver due to excess alcohol intake. NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, meaning there is fat in the liver but no inflammation. And most importantly, NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, fat and inflammation in the liver leading to fibrosis and eventually cirrhosis. What is non-alcoholic? There are 10 to 15 grams of alcohol in the average drink. The best criteria for determining that someone is not using alcohol excessively is less than two drinks a day per me for men and less than one drink a day per for women. Fatty liver disease is also associated with a metabolic syndrome. People with a metabolic syndrome have uh, at least three of the criteria shown on this slide. These include central body fat, high BMI, diabetes, low levels of good fat, and high blood pressure. There are many facets of the metabolic syndrome. The most important is to know that it is associated with coronary artery disease, and this is still the most common, common cause of death in patients with NASH. Other significant problems uh, include, as mentioned earlier, diabetes, sleep apnea, and an increased risk for cancer. On this slide, we can see that eating fat, beer, and fructose or result in a number of changes in the gastrointestinal tract, which result in the release of LPS, which is endotoxin. This, in turn, causes changes in the liver and how it met metabolizes fat, and this, in turn, results in inflammation. And then we get, in some patients, fatty liver disease. You must remember that eating fat, beer, and fructose does not cause everyone to have fatty liver disease, but it is a contributing factor. NASH looks like this on biopsy. The left side shows the liver cells, which are the uh, pink cells with little dots in them. And you can see that many of them have um, clear areas, which is the fat. On the right is more advanced fi uh, liver disease, where the blue represents uh, inflammatory cells and scarring. This is what cirrhosis looks like. You have a nodule of the liver surrounded by the blue fibrosis and this is uh, when the disease has progressed to, to significant liver 
damage. Who has this condition? Well, we the most important thing on this slide is the, that lean people do have fat and inflammation in their liver with 2.7 a percentage of them having this, whereas obese people, about 18.5% will have fat and inflammation in their liver. There is a small group of people uh, that have been identified who have normal liver enzyme numbers and still have fat and inflammation on their liver when they have biopsies because they were donating their liver or because they were having surgery for being obese. So looking at liver enzymes to identify this condition is usually the best way, but occasionally there are people who have fat in their liver that is not identified by simple blood tests. There is a genetic predisposition for this condition, and there are studies go ongoing uh, that are identifying some of these genetic factors. It is likely that in the future we will be able to uh, use this kind of testing to better identify people with fatty liver disease. So as I've said, we start out with a normal liver, it, uh, and in the condition where there is uh, the metabolic syndrome and genetic factors present, we get insulin not working as well, we get fat deposition, we get uh, stresses on the liver which result in apo apoptosis. That's uh, noted under the NASH part on the slide there. Apoptosis means that the cell death is happening. And then other cells in the liver respond to this that are called stellate cells. They respond to the fat and inflammation by laying down uh, fibrosis or scarring. As you can see here, we rate the scarring in the liver from F0, which is normal, to F4, which is cirrhosis. And there's increased mortality and complications as you get to cirrhosis. The important thing is that people who have F3, which is advanced fibrosis but not cirrhosis, many of them will progress to cirrhosis fast, within two and a half years. We don't know who these people are yet, but we know that this happens and we are working on trying to find ways to identify who are more likely to progress to cirrhosis in a short time versus the others who will progress to cirrhosis over a longer time, like 10 to 20 years. Survival with, this, with NASH is actually um, significantly reduced. This slide compares the more commonly understood hepatitis C and its mortality over 10 years. And you can see that the two lines, the dashed line and the thin line, for different groups of hepatitis C patients have the same mortality as patients with steatohepatitis, uh, the heavy line. Thus, this is a significant health problem. Biopsy is the best way to identify this condition, and the biopsy results do conform very well with predicting how the patient is going to survive. If you look at the upper part of this curve, the, the red line is the normal survival over 40 years, and those with minimal fibrosis are not much different from the normal survival curve. But as the liver biopsy identifies more and more fibrosis, moving from the uh, yellow line to the gray line to the dotted line, with increasing fibrosis, the mortality in these patients uh, decreases. Next, uh, increase, sorry, increases. Their mortality is greater. We can try to diagnose this condition by using blood tests, and there are several blood tests available for this. We also have available um, fibroscan and magnetic resonance imaging, both of which can be used to, to do a technique called elastography, which looks at the stiffness of the liver. And this helps us with diagnosing the amount of fat and inflammation in the liver. The FibroScan test is relatively inexpensive, but not widely available yet in this country. It is, however, found in most large cities at, at uh, larger medical centers. It is similar to doing an ultrasound, only it uses a little shock wave 
to assess the stiffness of the liver. Now that we have diagnosed a person with NASH, how do we manage them? Well, management is so far somewhat limited. We can do lifestyle modifications such as dieting, that means reducing calorie intake and particularly carbohydrate intake, weight loss, and very importantly, exercise, as exercise does improve insulin resistance. These steps often will reverse the problems caused by the NASH syndrome. However, some people do not respond and that we need to consider medical management. So far, there are no approved drugs for treating advanced fibrosis and NASH. Vitamin E and pioglitazone, which is a uh, medication that has been used for uh, treating uh, diabetes, uh, have shown to improve this condition, but as stated, they have not been improved yet by the FDA for this particular condition. A more extreme uh, form of management would be bariatric surgery. This does actually uh, reverse NASH, but it is a very big step because uh, surgery does have some mortality and uh, morbidity involved with it, but can be used to treat this condition in those who have failed. It is important to note at this point that there are a number of drugs being um, looked at through research studies to try to treat NASH. These drugs are aimed at dealing with the insulin resistance, dealing with preventing the cell death, and dealing with preventing fibrosis in the liver. Many of these ongoing studies are potentially available to patients throughout the country. It is anticipated that over the next year or two, we will be seeing several medications uh, come on board for treating this condition. Thank you for listening, and here are some ways that you can contact the American Liver Foundation for more information about non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or other liver problems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. John Goff, for sharing your expertise on NASH. And thank you again to our supporter, Rare Patient Voice. RarePatientVoice.com. Patients and family caregivers are needed to join our confidential panels to make your voice heard to shape products and services being developed on your behalf. We pay you $100 an hour to do so. RarePatientVoice.com. Join us today.